Just sat down here chilling with the ladies. All right, girls. How are you doing? So, I thought I'd take two minutes or ten minutes or two five minutes. How long this takes? Oh, two. I'm just a bit out of breath. I've just been forking this stuff up for the cows, for the heifers. Uh, Farmers' work's never done. Uh, so I just thought I'd take a, a few minutes anyway to just chat about Clarkson's Farm because. I've had a few comments and messages, people saying to me, what do farmers think of Clarkson's farm? And, uh, because I guess, what you forget is that although it's a farming programme, the vast majority of the audience isn't actually farming, because the majority of the people in England don't, or around the world even, don't do farming, they do other stuff in an office and stuff, and they've latched on to Clarkson's farm because they, of Clarkson really, um, and, uh, it's interesting to look at it from a farming point of view, from someone who, well, myself and other people graft away on, actually on farms. Uh, so, if, if you don't know already, the, the premise is Jeremy Clarkson, well-known TV presenter, has bought a farm in the Cotswolds, not that far from me, um, and he's then basically filming how it goes and what it's like on that farm, um, and it's a very entertaining programme. Um, and there's a cast of characters, the sort of key characters on there. So, should we start with that? So we got we got Charlie, the land agent, who is kind of uh, like the guy who comes in and gives him advice about the rules and regs, you know, what he can and can't do. Because, oh, tell me, the thing about farming is that I know we're completely weighed down with paperwork all the time and bureaucracy and stuff. Everything you do, um, you just get caught out on and you've got to be aware of what you can and can't do. So quite a lot of the time you do need advice really because you cannot do everything yourself. Charlie's a land agent, um, he's on the farm a lot and the reality is I know from farming point of view you don't have a land agent around a lot, you might contact them for advice and stuff. So it's a little bit like for the programme he just turns up and he's randomly uh, telling him things about like the cattle and stuff. That isn't really how land agents work generally, you, but you contact them for advice. But hey, he's there and it gives you an idea of what, what you really need. Um, so you've got Caleb, who seems to be the main man who comes around doing contracting on the farm. Young lad, very enthusiastic, hasn't been a lot of world experience, if you like, um, but very knowledgeable on the farm. And then you've got uh, Gerald, <laughs> Gerald, what a character he is. Um, he's, he's a kind of like, uh, he's a head of security, but I don't think... Um, but he's a traditional kind of uh, guy who works on the land and incredibly knowledgeable about farming. Um, the interesting thing about Caleb and uh, I it was Caleb or Caleb, Caleb maybe, and Gerald is that those are totally what a lot of people on farms are like. Uh, there's no exaggeration. There's plenty of, of people out there who haven't got flipping degrees and stuff, but have really switched on and really know what they're doing when it comes to the agriculture and stuff. And one thing that frustrates me in life is that there's so much emphasis on being clever and qualified. And it's not all about that. It's about blooming up here and what you can do with those, those fingers and hands. So uh, those guys, Gerald and Caleb, I've met loads of farms, like people working on farms like that, who might not have flipping bits of paper saying they've got O-levels and GCSEs and degrees, but crikey, they'll run rings around some people who do. Um, so those are the team on there. Now. The whole farm thing with, Je with uh, Jeremy Clarkson is you've got to take it with a pinch of salt, okay? First of all, he's doing it for entertainment. Secondly, some of the things I've seen, I'm kind of thinking, hmm. I mean, for example, I don't think Gerald and Caleb are the only people working on the farm. Uh, there must be other people in the background doing stuff. Same with the farm shop and, you know, his other enterprises. There's other people helping him that you don't see, um, you know, and I think some of the things are a little bit staged, but that's not an issue, really. What he's showing is what we have to deal with on a very down-to-earth way with comedy. Now, I, I find this, I've, I love, that we all, we sat down, honestly, I've watched, I'm up to episode six. We could have binge-watched the whole thing. If we, I've had to hold Harry back because he wants to watch everything all night. And I know a lot of people who've watched the whole series in one hit um, because it's very entertaining. And I think this is the programme that farming needed. It really is. Because what you've got is you've got the serious programmes about farming like Country File or, you know, um, some of those other documentary type farming programmes that people with a certain interest will watch 
but a lot of people won't because it's not their thing. Whereas the thing about this is that this has drawn in a lot of the public, from what I'm seeing on the internet, it's drawn a lot of the public that wouldn't normally watch farming programmes. And the way he's done it with the comedy element involved, if you like, the bit of humour, it's pulled people in to watch it that wouldn't normally watch farming programmes. And they've gone, oh yeah, I didn't realise they did it like that. Or because there's so much interesting information in amongst the um, kind of like humour, if you like. And, and so we're getting across to the public, I say we, Jeremy Clarkson is getting the farmers message across the public of what we do deal with. Um, and I've yet to meet a farmer who doesn't like this programme. We all, I think we all feel a bit disenfranchised from some of the farming programmes. I think Country File has now probably gone a little bit too much away from a farmer's programme because it was in the 70s more about farming. Now it's gone to general public and their organic cheese, you know, and veg vegan stuff and everything like that. Most farmers are like, we were. And Jeremy Clarkson is a lot more like a farmer. He's not woke. He likes a pint. He'll swear. He'll, he's basically, a, he's a lot like the rest of us really, although he's a millionaire and he doesn't necessarily need the income off the farm to live on. But what he does, and, and you'll see this with his battle and diversification, getting cattle in and converting a shed to uh, a cafe and stuff, is what he's doing is highlighting what we have to go through. I mean, the classic one was getting the cattle. First of all, we got them and they flip and escaped, and escaped again and again. I know all about that. I've had these phone calls at night saying these girls are out across a hedge and stuff, especially with the deer making holes. Um, but if we go on to his diversification with his farm shop, that's an interesting one. So it's very, very much, and I think farmers can probably relate to this, we're being pushed to diversify because of the uh, loss of the single farm payment and the fact that these girls and boys and whatever don't pay that well. So I, you could argue my diversification is doing my YouTube stuff, brings a bit of income in. Um, a lot of farmers are having to find other ways of making money and it's really hard. It's really hard on a couple of levels. First of all, it's really hard to actually make a living and on farming and do something else because it's not like you haven't got anything to do all day. So trying to add something to your business, you know, you might feel stretched enough as it is. And then you're walking into a zone you don't understand. But another thing was, is the bureaucracy, and he really shows this fighting against the council, is how to get into it and how to get planning permission and stuff. Um, and the, the example of this is his sheep shed. Now I have to say, I think the sheep shed was a red herring when he built that. I visited Diddley Squat Farm and I could see it wasn't built in a very great place for a sheep shed, a lambing shed. Uh, in the middle of nowhere, far away from the unit where he, he um, has his main farm. And if you, my experience is if you want stock shed near, you want it near where you live because of practicality of getting in the house and also having the equipment range and stuff. But he got planning permission for a sheep built barn. So, okay, so half the battle was building a building, right? Uh, the next battle though, what he wanted to do was convert this into a restaurant next to his farm shop, which total makes sense. The building's already there. Now this is the key element, okay? The building is already there. You could argue it's not a very pretty building, it's a practical building, but it's there. It's already there, so he hasn't had to build a new shed. Now this is where his battle began, began because they did not want him to have converted to a restaurant. The arguments about the car parking, the access and stuff, those things are already there, okay? So the car park, you'd have to change. But realistically, if you do this tastefully, landscape it well, um, you know, put plant trees around it, it's probably going to be better looking than the, the sheep shed. Yet, at the end of the day, they would not let him have it. And, and this is, so you could argue, so Jeremy Clarkson, okay, not the end of the world, he's got plenty of money. But this is the battle that farmers are facing not just Jeremy, but all the guys around. So there's plenty of uh, areas of outstanding beauty where there's farmers there who'd like to put a little tea room in or maybe do a restaurant or a farm shop. The planners are like, whoa, you can't do that. You can't do this. It's really frustrating. You know, told to diversify, you're battling against people who don't want you to change things. And, uh, you know, not all change is positive, but a lot of things are because the fact is Jeremy Clarkson's farm is a classic example of a farm shop that brings money into that business but impacts on so many people around the area. All those people supplying that farm shop are all little units and he showed that with the meeting of the farmers. All the little units around selling their honey or their milk. The lady who was selling milk had a horrendous problem with TB 
and as Jeremy showed you couldn't you can't do anything with TB on the farm because you're not allowed to disturb badges so massive issues there um, this it's very hard for me to, to say everything about Clarkson's farm because not all of you have seen it but um, there's significant issues with what he's dealing with and highlighting that in a, in a you know because he showed the difficulty of calving and the fact it was late at night well imagine if you're calving and then you've got to go and open your farm shop at the next morning and stuff um, and the interesting thing is as well is that what a lot of these councillors who were opposed to this farm shop and the restaurant didn't seem to get is the amount of money that it's putting into the economy in that local area the rural economy which is quite often underfunded and I'll give you an example of that. If you look on my YouTube, you can see a road trip to Diddley Squat, which I did with the family. Right, I'm here. Look at this behind me, a Diddley Squat farm so shop sign. There is pretty cool. Loads and loads of people turning up. So... Today, Gin, I'm not sure what that's about. I think he's got his tractor logo there. So we went to his farm shop. We bought some stuff in the shop. We then went to Chipping Norton and had lunch. Then we, we made a day of it. We went really early in the morning and then we also went to uh, the Lavender Farm and we went to Broadway Tower. So I calculated in that day, including lunch and all the bits, coffees and entrance fees, uh, I think we spent about 140 quid, okay? 140 quid just from our family went into that local area, which will then contribute to employment in that area and keeping those businesses going. So that is the impact that people like Jeremy Clarkson have had on that area, yet there seemed to be a massive we don't like Jeremy and I wonder whether a lot of it is not necessarily don't want a farm shop but it's like we don't like Jeremy Clarkson because he is a bit bullish and pushing against stuff anyway um, I think really what, I, what I, could, I could say loads more he's obviously sponsored by Stoag because the first thing I saw at the start of the program was he's wearing a Stoag hat I got one the same over there then he had, had a talk about cows he had up a notebook with Stoag on it and then he went to Stoag and there was a big sign saying Stoag and I thought fair play Stoag you've really nailed it there but um, I, I get stuff from Stoag because they're only at the road for us as well but the, the funny thing that made me laugh when he went around the shop, he said, I could buy everything in here. And do you know what? That is exactly, that's why I'm a farmer I can relate to. That is exactly how I feel when I go into Mole Valley. In the fact, I, it's like a sweetie store shop for farmers. You go around it and you go, oh, do you know what? While I'm here, I have a bullcock. I a lot of you don't even think about buying a bullcock, do you? But I was like, oh, oh some mineral licks for the cows. Oh, I'll have that. For you, it's, it's the 200 pound shop, isn't it? You go in there to buy a, uh, I don't know, a pair of mole grits for a tenner and come out and spend 200 quid for all the lovely things you want for the farm. But uh, that was that was just made me laugh. Um, anyway, there is so much to laugh about on there, but, it, but do watch the programme. I think if you're from a farming background, even if you don't like Jeremy Clarkson, you'll relate to what he's dealing with because of all the, the disasters, things that go wrong, which, let's face it, I know well, I'm well aware of. If, you, if you're from a non-farming background, Watch the program, but even if you don't like farming, because there's so much comedy there on well, ent they say entertainment value from the different characters and stuff that you'll you'll enjoy that level and you'll like watching maybe a few cows in the background. But um, yeah, honestly, from a farming point of view, from a farmer's point of view, what a great program! It's just it's on it's on many levels. It's very good. Right, I've got to actually crack on, do some work. These girls here, look at them. Look at these beauties. They're all right, aren't they? Oh, let me get up. Ah, oh, right. Hello, 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 hello. How are you? These are, these are pulling heifers, by the way. These will be in calf, hopefully. These are all the big ones, the little ones around there. These are the big ones that are in calf. And they're in here till they go down to the dry cow shed for calving later in the, uh, well, when they're near to calving. Um, right, anyway, I've got to get on and do some work. They're having... Uh, a bit of silage. They're loving that, aren't they? I've just forked it up. Look, there's my fork. All right, they're all tagged up. Look, all all right. Double tagged. I think um, I think Jeremy. I haven't seen it yet. I think Clarkson does a. That might be. Oh, it's tonight's episode. I think Clarkson does an episode where they're trying to tag the cows, and it it all gets muddled up. And that is so easy to get the tags wrong on that. Right. I've rubbed it on enough about this. There's plenty more to say, but um, watch the program, enjoy it, and. Uh, whatever you think of Clarkson think about the fact that he's a bit of an ambassador now for farming and he's the guy that farmers can relate to a lot more than some 
certain presenters that are on farming programmes and aren't necessarily getting their hands very dirty. Certainly not chopping their skin off with a mandolin. Right, crack on.